In the summer of 1720, Britain experienced its first financial crisis when several prominent banks collapsed. The crisis was sparked by the crash of an early joint stock company called the South Sea Company, which sold shares in a monopoly over trade with South America. As investors lost faith in the South Sea Company's bonds, they began to sell off other bonds and bank stocks, creating what historians call the South Sea Bubble that greatly affected Britain's financial industry and overall economy. To stave off this crisis, members of parliament debated whether bankers or the government should be held more responsible for preventing such crises. What was going on during the period leading up to the debate? In the early 1700s, King George II allowed banks to sell joint stock shares in order to raise capital for business and industry endeavors. This had given birth to investment opportunities for England's wealthy upper class. When investors on the market became too eager to buy more shares than what was on offer, more shares were issued and these companies started taking on dangerous levels of debt to finance their operations. At least until everyone got tired of waiting for the share prices to go up again and there were suddenly huge losses. However, those who would have suffered from the failure of these companies had already made a killing by buying shares when they were cheap. The House of Commons led a debate about whether or not bankers should be regulated as part of a solution to stabilize the economy, but it was largely outvoted by members of parliament who supported free trade and banking. What were they arguing about? It wasn't until five years after the crisis that London bankers realized how much public discontent their actions had caused and offered a defense of their practices to parliament in an effort to stay out of prison. One banker, William Patterson, argued that because goldsmiths were not qualified to assess risk, then a different class of risk takers should be allowed to charge for it. Another, John Asgill, claimed that banks could only serve as middlemen if they were able to keep at least one third of the deposited money on hand. In response, Parliament declared that all banks must have one fifth on reserve at all times or face closure. Despite these limitations, the bank was able to become profitable enough during this period that by 1737, it became the official British Treasury Department. Who were involved? In the 1700s, banks were largely unregulated, which meant they could issue any amount of currency they wanted as long as they had enough gold or silver on hand to back it up. This meant that if there was a cash flow shortage, or if a new group of people started asking for more loans, the banks could just make more money without worrying about needing to repay old debts and interest rates. However, this system had drawbacks. If someone's bank went under, he or she would lose all their money because the bank could only keep a small percentage of its total deposits in reserve. So even though the banks made profits when they lent out money, they also made losses when some people defaulted on their loans. At this time, many thought that regulating how much bankers could lend would lead to lower profits and higher risk levels. The lenders couldn't have too many defaults. But others thought it might be better for everyone involved because bankers would be less likely to put out risky loans. Why was this important? Parliamentarians were concerned with their relationship with banks and how they were going to deal with this crisis. The debate revealed a lot about the new role of parliament as well as its limitations. During a time of financial instability, it was important for Parliament to keep order and discuss remedies as opposed to taking control of economic matters outright or regulating banks too tightly. When Charles Carter proposed that British banking be regulated by Parliament and that those who do not comply would be considered enemies of the state, he did not get much support. He may have been out of touch with other members who were more interested in stabilizing markets than gaining power over them. However, there is still merit to his proposal since future governments could abuse this power if given an opportunity. What happened afterwards? Although some things did calm down a bit after this debate, it is important to know that there was never a final resolution to this debate between bankers and parliament. There were some reforms, but parliament always wanted more control of what went on with money, not just bankers and politicians. It was also at this time that people began to question who had the most power over them, their superiors or themselves. The idea of democracy started to take root among British citizens, as well as the idea that people should have some say in how they are governed. 
These two principles came together during the American Revolution and its aftermath when Parliament declared that all men are created equal. Don't forget to like, comment down below, and subscribe. <laughs>